suppression of the use of marijuana and of the forces lurking behind it are the most important jobs this department is now engaged in. In 1930, the records on marijuana in the Washington office of the Narcotics Division scarcely filled a small folder like this. Today, they fill cabinets. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Coloradians, and everyone that's smart enough to listen from the outside. It's one of the most amazing plants we've ever discovered. The pot party, the trippers, the grasshoppers, the hip ones, all gathered in secrecy and flying high as a cup. Please! Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another week of Stone de Petite with your hosts. As always, it's me, Kip, and I got my boy in quarantine over there, CB. How are you feeling, brother? I've seen better days. I'm not going to lie. I've seen better days. Uh, but, for those that don't know, Chris has had COVID for a week, but what? Yeah, I mean, I mean I'm going to like this. This variant is hot. And it felt like strep throat, which was the absolute fucking worst. Like, I don't know. It started out with a scratchy throat, and then it moved on to, like, holy fuck, I've got strep throat. No, it's COVID with body aches. And it was it was a fucking nightmare. I never had a bad fever, but you just felt weak and sluggish all day. Um, but finally, I'm on the up time, up. right? Yeah. Oh. I, I guess it was pissed because I evaded it so long. Classic Wait. you. You're you're a draft dodger back in 2001. And you move, and now hey, you, I've got a legit went, ligament problem with my trigger finger. It just doesn't work. You went three so. three years almost without it. <laughs> I know. know. I should be getting some kind of fucking award. But on the upside, those dialed in gummies, I couldn't feel my body for two days. Well, that reminds me. Let's give a shout out to our sponsors of the podcast. Everybody knows it, but we want to hammer that point home. Standing Akimbo, the 50 milligram. I gave Chris some of my medicinal edibles. I know it may be against the law. This is all alleged anyway. But Standing Akimbo, for those that have a med license, is the best dispensary in town. They have the most premier products, including the dialed in 500 milligram live rosin edibles that will make your body float but they also have it at a fraction of the price as the recreational 100 milligram dosages so you literally it pays for itself you should get your medical license if you need help getting your medical license dm us at stoned underscore appetite i will help you i can even give you a ride to a doctor's office to get checked out but they even have telehealth now i can tell you right now though right after you get that thing go the fuck to standing akimbo 3801 jason street right next to chubby's uh mexican burgers and whatever and right caddy corner to asian pe or pepper asian bistro and los carboncitos it's a fucking gem of a dispensary and they sell some of our favorite including smith Chris, um, obviously you can't smoke right now, but for those that are listening next week, July 22nd, we are launching the Stone Depotique Dark Pod, pending no more fuck ups. That's going to be on shelves at every high level health in the Denver metro area and over at our friends Cali's Cannabis on 30th and Larimer Street. So it's going to be available to everybody. It's going to have ecto cooler flavor vibes for all the 90s kids out there. Um, for those that watch Saved by the Bell, it's got the uh, motif for the design of that of the Max restaurant or the fun festive clothes that we wore in the 90s. It truly channels all that we embody, whether it be good food, good times, good cannabis. Seed and Smith is the same company that does that. But you don't have to wait for next week. You can get their products today at two Seed and Smith locations on Oakland Street and on Heckler Way up in Louisville. But they're also littered across the community. So go to www.seedandsmith.com to see the location carrying their products nearest you. Woo! All right, back to your health woes. Yeah, what the was, dialed in gummies. I did not dip my toe. I just went ahead and popped one. No, Ooh. you have to when you have shit like that. You can't Ooh. fuck around. Yeah, I was it it threw me for a loop there. I didn't move from the couch the rest of the day. 
Uh, I'm not, well, I'm glad you found a reprieve from the shitty feelings. Yeah, but other than that, like, I'm feeling better, but it, you're still just kind of – it's hard to explain because you're just kind of like, meh, and you're a little bit weak. Okay. Did, what's the preferred, preferred food? And obviously, you're going to have to do a lot of deliveries. How does that work in the apartment complex? Uh, are you and Steph – are excuse me, you and the girlfriend tag teaming, like, doing work or cl- cooking, cleaning? Luckily – I had gone to the grocery store right before I started feeling bad. Oh, nice. So, so I had a fully stocked fridge, but then I got bored because I couldn't do anything. And I was about to order fucking Chinese food and I wanted to get delivery. But the Chinese food place I wanted delivery from was on summer break, not coming back until the 14th. So I was just like, well, fuck. And so then I proceeded to call Tessa Delicatessen down the street. And asked that chicken guy, pesto sandwich is really good. Yeah. I was like, yo, guy, I'm obviously chicken pesto is my go to. But I was like, if you had to choose between the Cubano or the barbecue pastrami, what would you go with? And the gentleman told me the Cuban. So I got a Cuban. The Cuban's fucking fantastic. The Cuban's great. It is stacked to the brim with pork. It was really good. The chicken pesto is the one I fuck with over there. I yeah. don't like their Italian because they put mayo on it, but I'm going to actually tell you a story about a bad Italian from a good restaurant here in a second. I had, but I'm glad that you found a reprieve and you were able to get solid foods down. I'm kind of surprised by that. Yeah. My appetite was never, my appetite never fluctuated. Like I actually probably ate more this past week because I just sat around and had nothing to do. How does the dog, is he stir crazy? Have you been hiring uh, someone to come check on him? Uh, my lady okay. grabbed him and kept Helped him out. for a few days. There you go. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry to hear that you don't feel well. I'm going to give you a quick debriefing um, as well as talk yeah. with our uh, community as well because we have some pretty cool shit going down, Chris. Um, and you missed a pretty cool weekend. Yeah, yeah. I, all I'm doing is trying to search this brutal rental market here in Denver while you're off gallivanting in the Western Slope. Yeah, so I don't think everybody follows your personal page, and we're probably not going to try to dox you for that today. But I do want to ask you a quick question. How is the, I know you're looking for a new location. How do you feel about the, uh, the rental market right now? It's fucking absurd, dude. Like okay. people, people are posting and then people are renting them sight unseen. So I mean, as, as soon as somebody submits an application, it's like, hey, I want it. They don't even have to view the place, which is bullshit. Like there needs to be a set sort of things you got to do. Like you need to view the property before you can sign a lease. I'm sorry. No, that's totally understandable. Chris. And at the same time, we aren't like our budget's not outrageous. We're finding places, but they just get caught up. And then, I mean, it's the application process is just fucking wild. And then the other day, the lady emailing me about, you know, submitting an offer. I just laughed hysterically. I mean, so for those that don't know, Chris is currently on the hunt looking for a new apartment to move into here in the metro area. So everyone's going to be able to relate to this fairly well. But the problem is it's no longer we're playing by the rules of the game. Y'all are now bidding, I guess would be the best way to describe. Y'all are now bidding on the process. I mean, shit, we didn't bid, but uh, I mean, we're not looking for anything outrageous. We're looking for two bedroom houses. You know, it's not, there's plenty of them. (coughs) It's not like we're going to find like an apartment at a complex, but at the same time, like I'm not going to submit a bid to pay over what you listed your rental property over. That seems a little bit preposterous. Like I feel like it's a New York thing almost. Yeah. No, I had friends message me. They're like, wow, I didn't know this had reached Denver. And I was like, uh, news to fucking me too. I didn't realize we had to like come in there. I was like, the best we can offer is what you listed the rental property as and the peace of mind that comes with knowing you have responsible tenants. 
Yeah, I mean, you're not going to win on that one. I'll tell you. No, I wasn't hoping to win. I wasn't going to. I should have put three thousand dollars and just see what you would have said. Yeah, you should have. Um, But at the same time, you know, you'll find a place because as we see, more folks are not only moving away due to the fact of the cost of living, but also more buildings are turning into fucking you know livable locations by the month. So I have faith in you, and you got to kind of. It feels like the ones that do get snatched up usually get snatched up in like a week or two. So like if you had to sign for something today or tomorrow, you know, just because otherwise somebody else was going to, that would stink. So you'll find something. I believe in you. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. But enough about my woes. Um, For all those people searching for places to live, I feel you. Thoughts are with you. Um, But yo, how was Western Slope? Okay, so let me talk about the Western Slope real quick. Um, It's cool as fuck. It's actually a lot cooler than people give it credit for. And I think my computer is going to die, Chris. But I have the iPad set up as well. So if it does happen, give me a second. Just give me a signal. Um, But the Western Slope is cool as fuck. So Josh Nirenberg, uh, who started Ben 707 Food Bar, it's fairly prominent in the Grand Junction community as it's been there for like 10 plus years. He's fucking killing it. Like really? his food game is second to none. It's fucking good. And obviously that's nothing new. James Beard has recognized him multiple times as semifinalist and finalist of best chef in the mountain region and things of that nature. But in the last couple of years, obviously since COVID, maybe not a lot of people have visited back against the Grand Valley. Um, his new venture, the Taco Party, it's a, it's kind of not white people priced and white people tacos, but he's using like truly local ingredients. So like when we shit on someone like Federales, who has the Cisco and U.S. foods trucks backing up in there, like a Brinks van. Right. All, this guy's using Kelly Whitaker's dry storage grains to make fucking tortillas and batters and all of these other ingredients and you can tell that not only his skill set comes through with pairings like a fried cauliflowers and your fried chicken tacos and other shit like that you can tell that the salsas are intentionally placed how they are and things of that nature and we're talking about a casual fun spot yeah four dollars a taco but they they partnered with a toast to to do um, cocktails as well over there Man, oh, cool. let me fucking tell you what. Margaritas and Palomas with some true flavor. Know that like faux sweetener flavor. It yeah. was excellent. But Ben 707 was great. Best bites from the weekend came from Josh's Omakasi that we did. But everybody that told us to go there said that the burger was a gift from God, which means that next time we go do a wine tasting down there, You know, we'll stop at Ben and maybe go a little more casual than the refined route. But holy fuck, it's great. The food's good. The scene down there, it's kind of like a more casual, like the main drag of Grand Junction. Feels more like a a middle class Pearl Street where like nice little brick laid out buildings, uh, art galleries and retail shops. And then, you know, either on the main drag or right off the main chutes are some really fun and creative restaurants. And so while, you know, we weren't able to sample everything, we were only there for a weekend, it was really fucking good, Chris. Was it hot as fuck? It was hotter than the devil's dick. It was so bad, Chris. It was 102. And then when you're on cement, so like we went to Palisade on Saturday, we did a bike tour. There's a bike rental place in Palisade called Palisade Cycles. It's like 40 bucks. You rent the bike for the day. You can catch a fade and they have like little baskets. So if you buy wine, you can take them back with you. Well, we rented a B&B in Grand Junction and just took an Uber over to Palisade, rented the bikes from Palisade Cycle and everything that we did, which you can only do so many wine tours in a day or wine flights, you know? So we did three locations of that. Um, and we went to Col Terrace, which everybody knows. Um, we tried to hit Carboy, but it was a little out of our like zigzagging angle. We did Ordinary Fellow with, you know, Ben and his wife. And we talk about it on next week's episode with Ty Zock Wharton from Carboy. 